smile and hospitality help him make friends and mingle with people. God called him to serve as a global mission pioneer in Buolo Village in Manado, Indonesia. This district is considered an unentered area for the Seventh-day Adventist Church, and many people are hungry for the gospel. Larry received approval from government officials and the village leaders to work here. The first thing he did was visit every family in the community to become friends with them. As with many other small islands, most people here work as fishermen. Larry loves to be out on the water with the fishermen, helping them feed their families. He has found that by implementing Christ's method of ministry, people allow him into their daily lives. Planting fruits and vegetables is not common practice in this area. Larry saw this as an opportunity to meet people's needs. He created a farmer's group to teach the community how to start small gardens or farms around their houses. The goal was to provide some of their vegetables, chilies, and other daily foods. Larry always starts the programs with worship and prayer. But the farmer's group is just one of his methods of outreach. He also helps the community by distributing used clothes to them, which makes them very happy. Since this island is so remote and far from the main island, medical care is hard to access. Malaria is a threat here. High blood pressure and cholesterol are some of the common health challenges. Larry helps out by providing free health checkups and basic medical treatment to community members. People are so grateful for what he is doing for them. One day, one of the farmer's group members was sick. He's one of the members who came regularly to the worship discussions and grew interested in the Sabbath. Larry took care of him until he was fully recovered. Testing? Oh, okay. Thank you. Testing? Okay. But for you, you are looking at this little number, 516. Uh, 516. So you're playing the tune.
Good morning, everyone. Happy Sabbath. Yes, thank you. It is a wonderful, cool Sabbath day today. <laughs> Amen. Yes, for some of you who have experienced the summer heat this year, I, I appreciate a cool Sabbath. I want to welcome all of you who are here, those of you who are online, to our Sabbath worship this morning. We have our opening song. If you have your hymn books, please turn to hymn number 499. This is the words for What a Friend We Have in Jesus. I just wanted to give you a little bit of a kind of a fun fact. <laughs> if you go and check the Adventist hymnal, the hard-covered book, you will find that in the top corner, there is a number code. A long time ago, all of our hymns used to be poems that people wrote. Eventually, over time, certain songs or melodies were put with the poem, but in actuality, many different songs can be used, many different words can be used for the same melody. So I want to expand your mind and try new songs with new melodies because there are so many different ways to express your feelings just by changing the melody of the song. So most of you, you've known the words, hymn number 499, we'll be singing it as the closing song. But if you look closely, it shows that hymn number 516 is the melody we sang to. So I hope that you guys can try new things as you're singing with your families at home during the week or in Bible study, using that little code in the top right corner of a hymnal. The challenge is you do need a hardback hymnal as most of the digital hymnals have omitted this. So keep that in mind that it's not tradition, that actually traditionally hymns were sung in many different ways to many different melodies. So. I love this song. It says, what a friend we have in Jesus, a continual best friend, and we can bring everything to him in prayer. Does anyone have any unspoken prayer request that we can pray for this week? All right. So let's take our words, our prayers request to God at this time. Thank you, Father, for being with us every day, everywhere we go, that we are always in your presence, that you never lose sight of us. You never forget about us. There is nothing about us that you do not know. Help us to remember that you love us, that you care for us, and even when we cannot understand, you are working to redeem our lives. We thank you for giving us Christ as our example in all things, and we ask that we go out and serve just as he did to the people in his own town, to Jerusalem and beyond. As this week, as we look at the global church, help us to keep them in prayer also, to not think only of ourselves, but how we can help others grow the mission, grow the gospel in the hearts and minds of those who do not know you yet. Be with those who have raised their hands, especially who have unspoken prayer requests. We ask that you give them peace and joy in their hearts, knowing that they have not been abandoned by you and that you will show your way to them at the appointed time. We thank you for a Sabbath day that we have this time to fellowship with others and you. We thank you in Christ's name. Amen. So this week, as I said in the prayer, is the global week where the Adventist family gets to see around the world uh, what's happening in other parts of the world. 
So Indonesia is taking Christ to the islands. Larry is a cheerful person. His smile and hospitality help him make friends and mingle with people. God called him to serve as a global mission pioneer in Buolo Village in Manado, Indonesia. This district is considered an unentered area for the Seventh-day Adventist Church, and many people are hungry for the gospel. Larry received approval from government officials and the village leaders to work here. The first thing he did was visit every family in the community to become friends with them. As with many other small islands, most people here work as fishermen. Larry loves to be out on the water with the fishermen, helping them feed their families. He has found that by implementing Christ's method of ministry, people allow him into their daily lives. Planting fruits and vegetables is not common practice in this area. Larry saw this as an opportunity to meet people's needs. He created a farmer's group to teach the community how to start small gardens or farms around their houses. The goal was to provide some of their vegetables, chilies, and other daily foods. Larry always starts the programs with worship and prayer. But the farmer's group is just one of his methods of outreach. He also helps the community by distributing used clothes to them, which makes them very happy. Since this island is so remote and far from the main island, Medical care is hard to access. Malaria is a threat here. High blood pressure and cholesterol are some of the common health challenges. Larry helps out by providing free health checkups and basic medical treatment to community members. People are so grateful for what he is doing for them. One day, one of the farmer's group members was sick. He's one of the members who came regularly to the worship discussions and grew interested in the Sabbath. Larry took care of him until he was fully recovered. The family praised the Lord because of his kindness. This family has asked Larry to continue visiting them to pray and share more about the truth, especially more about the Sabbath. Please pray for the work that Larry is doing in this newly entered area of Indonesia. Pray that more people will open their hearts and be ready for the second coming of Jesus. Thank you for supporting global mission efforts to send pioneers like Larry into unentered areas of the world. So amazing to hear all the different things that people are doing around the world. So if you want, you can always go to the Sabbath School Mission. They have lots of different videos. I only show it on the fourth week here, but they have one every week. So, as we continue, this quarter, we are studying in the crucible with Christ. Uh, for those of you who haven't <laughs> uh, received a quarterly, I would encourage you, you can go online, pick one up, or open it in your tablet or device, and you can study it. This is the verse for this week. 2 Corinthians 3.18, I looked at different translations and I thought this one, and we, will, and we all with unveiled face continually seeing as in a mirror the glory of the Lord and are progressively being transformed into his glory from one degree of glory even to even more glory, which comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. And I was reminded by another pastor that because God is infinitely holy, we can infinitely be transformed. There is no end point. Not here on earth, not in heaven. We can continue to grow. So I encourage you that you can join a group. We have lots of small groups. If you uh, wanted to meet during the week, we have Sabbath schools going this week, that you can be progressively transformed because iron sharpens iron. I encourage you, study with another person, even if it's on the phone just studying together will sharpen your mind, will transform you into more of God's image. So our third quarter focus is on the South America division. And you can see most of the projects this year are focused in Bolivia and Brazil. And today's story is going to be in Bolivia. The official name is the Puerto National State of Bolivia. There is 11.6 million people with four 
uh, official languages. And one of the things, because I like food, I like eating, so I was curious, what do they like to eat there? One of the main dishes is sopa de mani. I don't know any Bolivian, so it's actually a peanut soup made from pasta, vegetables, and ground peanuts. So one of the projects that they started is in a story, and again, this is the mission, quarterly mission for this year. They talked about different uh, ways that they're getting involved. So for the children, if any of you have children, there is also a separate children's mission. And it talks about a children's story, giving fun facts and interesting things, and you can go to adventistmission.org. And it's actually in a PDF, so if you wanted to download it and use it, there's a children's mission as well. So different options, different things you can see. All right, so I'm going to give the abridged summary version of today's story, God is in Control. And it's talking about how they are going to, how they were able to start building a mission. So in the northern part of Bolivia is Trinidad, Bolivia. There's also a country called Trinidad. I, again, I'm not going to read it word for word. But uh, Carol was with her husband, and she had the opportunity to leave Bolivia and go to Brazil to study. They gave their home to a friend to watch and take care of, because she would be gone for several years doing a degree. They, their friend said, I really love the home. I love the land it's on. Can I buy it from you? And she said, absolutely. Here, I'll even give you some money that'll help you start paying for the home to get the loan, and then you can pay me back. Carol goes back and then found out that the friend was trying to acquire the house by kind of like usurping the house. By just living in the house, he could stay there a long time and pay no money, and the house would be automatically given to him. So, of course, she feels very betrayed by this friend that she tried to help, and it goes to court. Year after year after year, they're in court. This is my house. I've been living in this house. What are they going to do? During this time, Carol has to go back to Brazil to finish her studies, and they do not have money to pursue the court case in Bolivia. So Carol says, it's okay. Um, I will stay in Brazil. We'll settle down. We have a house. We'll stay here. I want to ask my old friend, Kurt, to help me. Kurt was a Seventh-day Adventist. She told Kurt, I'm going to give you my house, the property, to the church because I wanted to build a clinic there. I wanted this place to be a place people got healthy, but it's in a legal battle. What happens? The court case goes on another five years. Patience of the saints. It goes to the Supreme Court in Bolivia. When it gets to the Supreme Court, in 30 days, it belongs to the SDA church. After years and years, God's timing is perfect. And now this building, this property, they are starting to build a new church project, which bleh, which will have a healthy lifestyle center in addition to the church. So what was frustrating and lost for Carol, God actually used to bring blessings to other people. And so as you can see that the church is not constructed, there's still like a tarp and poles, but they're still worshiping in there because they believe this is our place to worship. We are together and the project will be done. So I encourage you all, if not this project, maybe Indonesia or whatever God puts on your heart, there are many members of our church family around the world who want to share the gospel, who want to serve God. And I ask that you make it a point to pray for them or support them financially during this 13th Sabbath as well as this third quarter. I want to remind each of you, if you have not already come from Sabbath school today, that next week you can join us at 10 a.m. from 10 to 10.45 upstairs in John Hall. We have an English and a Korean class. And then for the little kids, we do have Daniel and John classrooms. 
So you are encouraged to come and worship together with us. We can bow our heads for a closing prayer. Thank you, Father, for giving us the knowledge of you. Thank you for giving us able bodies and minds to be able to go, to work, to serve, to pray. We thank you for people like Larry who are going out to those very far, very rural, and teaching them simple things that will benefit their health spiritually and physically. We thank you for times that we think nothing is working and we are frustrated because you are able to do miraculous things. Thank you so much for that new church in Bolivia that's being built and grown after years of property battles. You were able to turn things around for your kingdom in just 30 days. We thank you so much for showing us these things and we ask that you give us wisdom and insight in how to serve not only those far away, but those close here. We thank you so much for your love, for the knowledge of you, and for a time and place to worship. Help us to help those who do not have as much as we do. We thank you for all these blessings. We ask that you continue to live in our hearts and mind each day, each moment. In Christ's name, amen.
Happy Sabbath, church. We are going to start with our song service with the song that Rachel has been playing so beautifully, I Know Whom I Have Believed. to the Lord. Oh, 
Good morning, church, and um, happy Sabbath to all of you. And this morning, I would like to express a very warm welcome to each and every one of you here this morning. We are few in numbers this morning because there are many of our members that are on vacation, summer vacation now, but in spite of that, you are here, and we are all here together today to worship God and to sing praises to His holy name. And so this morning, I would like to extend a very warm welcome to our regular members. It's always good to see you here. And to those that are visiting with us today for the first time, our guests, I'm not sure if we have any guests this morning. Is there anybody here for the first time? Anybody that's come up here for the first time today? We don't have anybody, but if you are here um, for the first time or for the second time, a very, very warm welcome to you too. We are always happy to have guests here amongst us. And this morning, I have two announcements that I would like us to take special note of. First of all, our lesson study. Um, we have two lesson study classes in John Building, and of course, also the children's lesson study in Daniel Building. And um, I would just like to remind our teachers that we need to always finish on time every week so that our programs can start on time and finish on time. And then also for today, we will have a season of prayer right here in our church starting at 2 p.m. So if you are free today, you are very welcome to join us. Every Sabbath at 2 p.m., we have a Bible study class in John Building, one, room 123, room 123. And our Bible study group has decided to have a season of prayer to pray for revival for each one of us and also for our church as a whole. And so it will be from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. today this afternoon. So, if you are free, you are very welcome to join us. We will sing songs. We will read from God's Word. We will pray together. We will pray on our own, and we will pray for our pastor, for his family. We will pray for our members and their families in our church. We will pray for our children in our church, and, um, and if there's any other... Um, if there are any other requests, we will also pray for that. But our main aim is to pray for our members, for our leaders in our church, and also for a revival to take place in our church, but starting with us. And so you are very welcome. If you cannot come at 2, you can come at 3 or at 4 or at 5. It does not matter. Or if you come at 2 or at 3 and you need to leave, that's fine. You can still join us and you can leave when you need to leave. But uh, we will have our season of prayer and Bible readings and singing praises starting at 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. today right here in the sanctuary. So everybody, you are, everybody is welcome to join us. And so this morning, to, um, just to, before we start with our divine worship hour, let's bow our heads for a word of prayer and ask God for silent prayer and ask God to open our hearts and to open our minds for His word today. So let's bow our heads in a word of silent prayer. Amen. Okay, let us stand as we sing our open, uh, our intro, it, open my eyes that I may see. Thank you. 
kind of heavenly father how great thou art how sweet you are your goodness and your perfect protection upon our church members individually and by household you have been so good to each one of us and we want to thank you for that unchanging and unconditional love oh father in heaven on this blessed sabbath morning in the world, there are more than 23 million people are gathering together. Remember daily this Holy Sabbath day as the remembrance of thy creation power and also your saving grace. Oh, Father, now we are gathering together in the name of Jesus because we are followers of the truth and we want to keep this seventh day, the Sabbath day, holy as you are. Oh, Father, we are inviting your divine presence in the midst of us. So please come and dwell in our hearts. Control our thoughts and minds so that we can purely and with our genuine heart, we will worship you. Oh, God, be with each and every one of us as we listen to the message, as we give our voices to the praises of you, and also as we are pleading to the throne of grace. You will listen to us and you will answer our prayers. Oh, Father, please be with all our church members, those who are sick and in homes and wherever they are, Lord. We pray that your holy angels will keep them all safe and also their hearts will be tuned in the heart of Jesus today. Lord, as we are begin and open this a chapter of worship, please be with us and Dwell in our hearts until the end of this worship. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, let's remain standing for our opening hymn, Rejoice Ye Pure in Heart. Chanting as we 
It is now time for us to pray together, and so I'm going to ask the congregation to kneel with me, if you can, and we will petition our Heavenly Father. Our Father who art in heaven, Lord, this morning we call on your holy name because you are our God and you are a holy God. And Father, you are worthy to be praised and worthy to be worshipped. Father, you created us and you sustain us every day, Father, and you pour your choicest blessings on each and every one of us every day, Father. And this morning we have come into your house of worship, Lord, to commune with you because you are our God. And Father, you created the Sabbath day for each one of us, Lord, where we can come aside, Father, one day in the week to worship you, Father, and to spend quality time with you. Um, and so, Lord, I pray that you will come very near to each and every one of us. Lord, we know that your Holy Spirit is here with us to bless us, Father, because we are here to worship you. And so, Father, we thank you for what you have done for us during this past week. And we are here today, Lord, because of your wonderful and wonderful blessings and because of your grace and your mercy. And Lord, I pray that our worship here this morning will be acceptable in your sight. Father, speak to our hearts, speak to our minds this morning, Lord. Open our hearts, open our minds for your word this morning. Lord, you are using Pastor Joshua Shin this morning to present your word. And Lord, you have placed a special message in his heart and in his mouth for us, Lord. Father, please touch his mouth, touch his throat, this morning, I pray, Lord, with your hand of healing, and Lord, as he presents your word to us, may we not see him, but may we see Christ in him and through him. Please bless each and every one of us here this morning, Lord, and may your Holy Spirit have free reign amongst each one of us here this morning, Lord. May we open our hearts to the promptings of the Spirit this morning, the Holy Spirit this morning, Lord. And may we accept Jesus Christ anew this morning as our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Thank you, Father, for hearing our prayers, and thank you for answering our prayers. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. children's story if you are a child or a parent please come down for our story okay, happy sabbath everyone Today, I brought a little friend with me to share with you about Jesus. So, I brought this teddy bear with me. His name is Steel. And how, how old do you think he is? One? Yes, you're right. He is one year old. Um, he, his birthday is in April of 2021. So, he is a little over a year old. Um, he was given to me from a very special person, so I decided to celebrate his birthday. <laughs> okay, um, so I brought Steel with me because I wanted to share that he brings me comfort when I'm sad or lonely, and he always has a smile on his face when you look at him. Um, that's how he was made, so he can't make other faces. <laughs> and he also encourages compassion Compassion, I looked it up, it's a, it's a big word, and it's basically sympathy and concern, which are also big words, but they are 
There are words that define love and kindness. Um, so for example, when someone is sad, instead of ignoring their feelings, you listen to them. So that is compassion. Or when someone is hungry, maybe you could share your food with them. So that is compassion and that is kindness and love. Uh, another reason I brought him is to compare him to the love of Jesus. So um, some, some grown-ups think I'm weird because I do like to snuggle with Steele at night and I cuddle with him because he's very soft and easy to cuddle with. And some people think I'm weird for it because I'm not a child anymore, but I really enjoy it. So Steele is very nice to cuddle with. And I, you can touch him later if you want to. Um, but you, do you know what's even better than steel? What's better than a teddy bear? <laughs> Talking, hmm? food? <laughs> yes, food is better than a teddy bear, I agree. Um, but talking to people is better than talking to a teddy bear because he can't talk to me. I can talk to him, he can't talk to me. But talking to people, I can give them compassion and they can give me compassion. So there is a connection, right? So what is better than talking to people? What is even better than talking to people? Yes, talking to Jesus. <laughs> Very good. So talking to Jesus is the best way, right? So while steel can be comforting to me and people can be comforting, Jesus is the best comforter. And he gives the most love, most kindness and compassion for everyone. So I wanted to share that with you. And also, lastly, I wanted to share a Bible verse. It's in Psalm 103, verse 8, and it says, The Lord is compassionate and merciful, slow to get angry, and filled with unfailing love. So as you go throughout your day today and next week, I want you to remember that while cuddling with teddy bears and stuffed animals is nice, talking to people is also very nice. But what is even better? Talking to God, yes, talking to God is the best way of talking to someone. So I want you to remember that. And now I want you to put your hands together and close your eyes to pray. Uh, dear Jesus, I want to thank you for the Sabbath. Thank you for the children of our church, those who are here, and also those who are at home. Uh, I want you to bless them and remind them that your love and your compassion, your kindness, is the best love and the best kindness and the best compassion more than anyone can ever give us. Help them, help them to remember that as they go throughout their day. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, thank you, everyone. You can go back to your seat. Good. 
Praise the Lord. Happy Sabbath, everybody. Good morning. Well, Sister Nayun Kim, thank you so much. That wonderful rendition of the song, Confession of Faith. My God, my God, let my eyes fix on you. And overcoming the world with faith and have victorious life every day. Yes, that is our prayer. Thank you so much for this wonderful music to the Lord and to our hearts. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters, I'm very glad to have you on this wonderful Sabbath day. Well, although today, I just counted about 64 members in this chapel now. Of course, usually we, we had about 100 people uh, during the weekdays, I mean, or Sabbath days, but this morning I, I just felt that maybe many of our church members are enjoying our vacation time. Some of them, they return back to their own homeland, and some of them are traveling. Of course, they are worshiping other churches, so I bless them all as they remember this holy day of worship. We are working on a series of things that should govern our faith. Just as each individual has a life motto and the family has a family precepts, there must be a spirit of faith that strongly dominates the lives of the saints. The first theme I had from this you know, series of uh, a sermon, I had the first sermon was a record rules memory. Of course, the record here is the Word of God, preaching that our faith must stand firm on the most accurate and unchanging truth, which is the Word of God alone, and not on the in inaccurate and easily changing human memories, but we have to stand firm on the words of God. And the second topic I chose was space dominates the consciousness. Yes, it is true. We must always live in the spirit of Koram Deo. Before God. In front of Jehovah God. Since our God is invisible, we can easily forget our God. Although we love and respect Him. And we recognize him as our father, yet we easily forget his presence in the midst of our lives. Our solemn attitude toward his presence, finding ourselves always standing before God, that is the spirit of reverence. And the third one I gave you was a greeting controls relationship. Many of us, we understand the warm greetings from the mouth of holy God. Right after the fall of Adam and Eve, where are you? It was not, you know, kind of the word from the detective or police cop's word. But God was coming and trying to find the hidden two persons from the hearts of his unchanging love. He is now agonizing with the fact that these two members, the first created human beings, are fallen. But he brought a solution. He prepared two skin garments for Adam and Eve, which would cover and which would make them safe from extreme heat and cold. Yes, that Jehovah God, uh, Jesus Christ, came to this earth as the Messiah. And he always greeted to the people, Shalom, peace to you, peace to you. And last Sabbath, not last, last Sabbath, actually two Sabbaths ago, my fourth series of sermon title was, A Clothing Governs Behavior. 의복은 행동을 지배한다. And I believe you have remembered these images. 
And I, I told you, the human history, the earthly history, going along with the clothing history. From the very beginning in the book of Genesis and to the very last chapter of the Revelation, it is talking about a dressing, uh, dressing grace. God appears as the dresser who takes away our filthy and unclean clothes, but he is always putting his clothes of righteousness, the garment of a cleanliness. That is Jesus Christ. Today is the fifth day, Then I chose today's title is Inclination Governs Choice. Again, Inclination Governs Choice. 성향은 선택을 지배한다. 성향은 선택을 지배한다. I will start with this image. Lesson from the four monkeys. Have you ever seen this uh, kind of doll? Well, actually, I have a wooden, made of wooden and also the made of horns. But I could not find them, you know, in my house. So I just prepared the image. Can you guess what they are talking to you? The first one somehow, you know, shouldering up and putting his hands around his big stomach. <clears throat> Actually, what I have, uh, the, I mean the doors, there is a written message. But this doesn't have. But we may guess what kind of message it gives. Number one, show no evil. The very last one. Show no evil. Then you may guess the second one. See no evil. And the third one. Hear no evil. And the very last one. Speak no evil. Actually, this is a message from the Lord. Show no evil, see no evil, hear no evil, and speak no evil. Why Myers Briggs, a type indicator, so called MBTI, it is so popular nowadays. You know, our young people, they would not have a conversation without knowing their you know, MBTI results. They always talk about the, what is your MBTI, you know, what kind of personality you have. And they're trying to understand. Although they just encountered each other for the first time, they want to know the person through this result. Maybe some of you have your own. And you may guess mine. And you may think of yours. And as we are looking at you know, some of the great uh, successful People like Yuna Kim or Steve Jobs or Oprah Winfrey or, you know, Bill Gates. The people are trying to understand what kind of personality he has had so he grew up or successfully made of his life out of this. You know, the BTS is now world popular singing group and the, each member of them, they show their, you know, MBTI research and trying to show or trying to be understood by the people, I'm such a person. Not only this, it is not scientific, but some people are still believing. It is a thousand year old human practice. From the ancient time, people looked up the sky. The countless stars could have some effect on their lives. So they made a horoscope chart. They tried to get fortune for the day and for the month and for the years and finally predict what kind of future he would have. How about the blood type? It is also so popular. 
blood type A or B or AB or O. Okay. What blood type do you think I have? 유경희 집사님, 제가 무슨 형 같아요? A? Uh, how about Jenny? <laughs> oh, that's right. I'm O type person. Then let's see. Then, you know, definitely I would be a what? responsible, practical, strategic, organized, determined, decisive, objective, success oriented, and logical. Well, yes. Some characters are exactly mine, but some are, I don't know how much. By the way, as you can look at this, you know, A, B, not C, A, B, A, B, and O, these four types of blood, somehow you understand now all types have nine good characters. Nine of them, equally nine, 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 nine. They're all good. So I just pray that if our people are living with this style, these characteristics, the world will be peaceful and loving and, you know, so much associating and grateful. But still, people, although they may have these positive good characteristics, but they live differently. How about this? Have you ever done this? When I was young, the people usually call in, hey, Joshua, come and open your palms. You know? And they tried to read my, my palm. So, and they said, okay, this is the you know, lifeline. This is for possessions. This might be your marriage life. Like that, you know. As you look at this, all of us, we have a palm lines. When we are young, very, very young, in mother Zoom, somehow we are squeezing our hands like that, you know. And the, the people believe that this promise tree will give like a life fortune or life way. So they studied and millions of people are doing this every single day. And some people are paying the money and trying to get their fortunes from these promise tree scholars. Today, I just set a title, Inclin Inclination Governs Choice. What does it mean? What do I try to speak to you through this topic? As I've told you, the MBTI people, they try to get the license. Yes, you can get license, and once you are mastered and having this license, you can earn the money. By the way, the people are then divided into 16 different categories according to their answers. MBTI has 93 questions. And how you answer to the questions, though those 93, you will be somewhat categorized out of 16. And nowadays, the people are trying to match since you are like an ISTJ, you must find ESFP. Then you will live good life. I don't know, Jimun, what is your, you know, the characteristics. But here, if you are ENTP, you must find a lady INFJ. <laughs> I don't know, Karen is that kind of person. <laughs> By the way, our brother, Jung Jimun, he will... Uh, go to the States tomorrow, and he will live there for at least for five next years. And he's going to get married to Karen. Do you remember Sister Karen? Very sweet, our singer, you know, sweet lady, always leading out the song service and, and, you know, giving us very sweet, you know, special music. She's now in the States. She returned back maybe in June, June like that. Uh, they, they've been associated, you know, for some, I don't know, months and not, not, not years, but, you know, uh, in Christ they met together and now they're going to have a strong faith-oriented family in Christ. So I want to bless him. Okay. But anyway, people trying to understand 
different personality and trying to match what kind of person I need and what kind of person I must be. How about this horoscope or constellation fortune? Have you ever tried to get your daily horoscope fortune? And has it been always fitting to your daily what kind of fate or daily luck about monthly and or your future? I don't believe that that was always correct. Maybe sometimes you may get, oh, this is good. Because mostly fortune tellers are giving good, you know, positive futures and good senses. So that you are feeling, okay, okay, that's good, that's good. But it is not always going that way. As I've told you, nine good characters, like a blood type A, she must be kind, compassionate, sensitive, calm, curious, lawyer, idealistic, and deep and committed. So the person, if he is belonging to A type, he or she must be that kind of person. But sometimes we have a mixed characteristics and some are good, some are bad. As I've told you, if all of them, these A-type persons, are being led or lived in such a way, then our world will be really peaceful. Don't try to get your palmistry and try to believe that, oh, this must be my fate. I must be like this. No. Hey, you know. I do not know why the human beings are trying to see the future through this constellation or through, you know, palmistry or through blood type. But one thing is sure, the people want to know their direction and their destiny. Today, I'm going to talk about that. You know, this is the first image I showed you. Lessons from the four monkeys, do not show evil, do not see evil, do not heal evil, do not speak evil. What was the first impression you are all understanding as you are watching this image and the words? What was your first impression? Michelle, show no evil, see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. What was your understanding? What Pastor Shin is talking and uh, trying to talk? Or what this image is giving me? There are four no's, right? Don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. Why, why does it speak of them? I cannot hear you, but okay. Speak a little louder. Huh? Being evil is sin. Okay, sin. Yes. Let me tell you, once we see this image and listen to this, I do not do this, 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 this. A four no's. Definitely the people, especially young people, would have, oh, why? No, 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 no. So it's in a negative a narrative command. You don't do this, don't do this. It means there are a lot of evil things in the world. Full of evil things are in the world. If you open your eyes, you will see a lot of evils. That's why you should not see evil things. If you open your ears, there would be a lot of evil things. From radio, from the station, from, st uh, from TV, and from dramas and movies, you will listen to the horrible news. And if you speak, open your mouth, you would. Speak a lot of evil things. That's why this no means there are a lot of evil things around us. We may have this evil influence from the beginning of the generation to the end. This evil influence, you just imagine, how about, you know, in the time of 
Adam and Eve, right after the fall. Maybe the accumulated sin or evil influence not that big because there are only two people, you know. Right after they just cast out from the Garden of Eden, they started to build a community with their own clans and their own springs. So maybe the, the rate or the, the amount of evil influence would be very low level. Then how about Noah's Ark, the, you know, the antediluvian, the time that God was judging them with the flood, great water. The Bible says the sins of human beings overflowed to the maximum level. That's why it must to the peak. Then how about in the time of Jesus, about 2,000 years ago? Maybe we may think that about middle level. But actually the pen of inspiration, the end of Old Testament and just beginning of the New Testament, it was the full of sin. That's why Jesus came to earth in that particular era. So we would say that is another peak point of. That how about in the 21st century, right before Christ's second coming? Yes, definitely. There will be a great judgment by our God. So we would say, again, the amount of the evil influence will be reached to the top, the maximum level. With this understanding, you please try to figure out what kind of spiritual life we Christians must have? What kind of things should rule over our faith? Mr. John Poor cite a Sartre, the, the pronunciation, well, let me ask, Nicole. He is a French philosopher. Would you kindly read his name? Okay, Sartre, they said, Jean Four Sartre, I listened to the, you know, the, the neighbor vocational, uh, I mean, dictionary pronunciation over and over again, but they said, Jean Four Sartre, but anyway, this man said, the life is a series of choices between birth and death. I preached once about this, life equals B, C, D. We have to choose. We have to have a, our choices as we have our birth on earth and to the moment of death. B and D, we are constantly choosing something. In small things, maybe choose my what drinks, what kind of drink, orange juice or grape juice or apple juice. Simple ones. But even heavier and greater things. Should I go to the America or should I wait for Karen come to Korea? Like that, do you? Which school I must go and enter? What kind of major should I have for my life? What kind of person should I get married to? You know, this is a big decision. But anyway, daily basis, we are choosing so many things. But in order to reach this a progressive work to the choice, we have a kind of gradual, you know, the progressive practices. We must observe first. And then out of many things, out of many choices, we are curious on this. Oh, they're a white color, yellow color, you know, blue color, green color, orange color. What kind of color? should I choose? And once you are having this, you know, the kind of knowledge or experience over and over, over again through five senses, somehow it's been accumulated. And repeatedly you have a counter guess. Counter guess means you are trying to feed yourself with that color. Or if I put my, uh, the orange color, it will mix with my room or my skirt whatsoever. So you are trying to figure out which taste or which item would be good to me. So you are always trying to guess. 
which one would be good for me. And you are doing this, you know, repeatedly, and finally you will have your own resolution. And once you make that one, as you go to the auto shopping mall or, you know, like a, a restaurants, you will always pick up a similar things. Why? Because your brain and your life has been filled with this repeated, repeatedness of this choice. That's why finally you always have this choice. Let me tell you, God knows your life from the beginning till now. And of course, to the end of your life. God knows my life from the beginning of my, li my life in my mother's womb. Maybe I was conceived, maybe a certain day, and I was born to the world in 1962, December 25th, Christmas Day, 8.30 in the morning at Samani Church. That day was the beginning of my life, and God and God's angels know my life story. But at the same time, there is another being knows my life perfectly. Who is that? Satan. Satan knows my days and weeks and months and years until this time. He cannot know my future, but somehow because of my 60 years of life, he could assume Joshua will choose this life. Joshua will decide this. Joshua will make this resolution. Because of my practice, repeatedness of my resolution. So, now we have to look at this story. We know the Adam and Eve story, the first four. Sister Eve, our first mother, unfortunately made the wrong decision. But let me tell you this. The angels warned them to be on their guard against the devices of Satan. For his effort, the Satan's effort to ensnare them would be unwearied. While they were obedient to God, the evil one could not harm them. For if need be, every angel in heaven would be sent to their help. To, to their help. If they steadfastly repelled his first insinuations, they would be as secure as the heavenly messengers. But should they once yield to temptation, their nature would become a so depraved that in themselves they, have, they would have no power and no disposition to resist Satan. Once they are fallen, and they would become so depraved, then they will be always choosing that way. You know, having kind of inclination. They could be now in you know, a kind of neutral state, not evil to not good, but always trying to be good because of the, that way they were chosen and they were created. But this first one mistake will bring them to the tendency toward the sin. And here it says, The angels had cautioned Eve to beware of separating herself from her husband while occupied in their daily labor in the garden. With him she, sh she would be in less danger from temptation than if she were alone. But observed in her pleasing task, she unconsciously wandered from his side. On perceiving that she was alone, she felt an apprehension of danger, but dismissed her fears, deciding that she had a sufficient wisdom and strength to discern evil and to withstand it. Now you look at the eyes of Eve. With a so strong curiosity, she's now what? Gazing into the eyes of this serpent. And she was so curious. This animal is talking to me. Definitely she must be understood. Oh, this is temptation of Satan. But she didn't. 
Let me just read the, you know, the line, blue line and yellow line. The fruit was very beautiful, and she questioned with herself why God had withheld it from them. Now was the tempter's opportunity. As she was gazing into, and now the serpent, actually, the Satan himself is talking. Whoa, now she is captured. Instead of fleeing from the spot, she lingered wonderingly to hear the serpent speak. Had she been addressed by a being like the angels, her fears would have been excited. But she had no, she had no thought that the fascinating serpent could become the medium of the fallen fall. Who was more clever? Yes, Satan, than Eve. This, you know, the uh, sin effect. All inclination toward the sin inherited to Adam's descendant, the Cain. Now I will compare these two characters. You know, here Cain and Abel, the sons of Adam, differed widely in character. Abel had a spirit of loyalty to God. He saw justice and mercy and the Creator's dealings with the fallen race. And gratefully accepted the hope of redemption. That's Abel. But the first one, Cain, was different. Let's see. But Cain cherished the feelings of rebellion and murmured against God because of the curse pronounced upon the earth and upon the human race for Adam's sin. He permitted his mind to run, to run in the same channel that led Satan's force. Indulging the desires for self exhortation and questioning the divine justice and authority. So, you know, we have a two inclination. Abel toward the good, grateful, and understanding the plan of redemption. Yet Cain had what? The other side. Murmuring against God and distrust and questioning about a God's divine righteousness and authority. And that inclination finally made a different decision. Let's look at this. These brothers were tested as Adam had been tested before them to prove whether they would believe and obey the word of God. Without the shedding of the blood, there could be no remission of sin, and they were to show their faith in the blood of Christ as the, uh, as the promised atonement by offering the first string of the flock in the sacrifice. Beside this, the first fruits of the earth were to present it before the Lord as a thank offering. Okay, this was the request. And now let us know that whether Abel and, you know, the Cain understood or know this. I underlined, you know, all the verbs. You look at this. They were acquainted with, in other words, they had a knowledge on this, the provision made for the salvation of man, and understood the system of offerings. Both of them, they already understood the offering system, which God had ordained. They knew that in these offerings, they were to express faith in the Savior, whom the offerings you know, uh, typified. And that at the same time to acknowledge their total dependence on him for pardon. And they knew that by thus conforming to the divine plan for their redemption, they were giving proof of their obedience to the will of God. They had a full knowledge. They have given the message. You have to offer this way. But their decision... Their choice was totally different. Abel, he sacrificed the what? The lamb, according to the God's command. But Cain did the other way. But Cain, disregarding the Lord's direct and explicit command, presented only an offering of fruit. There was no token from heaven to show that it was accepted. Cain became before God, and Cain came before God with murmuring and infidelity in his heart, 
in regard to the promise to sacrifice and to the necessity of the sacrificial offering, his gift expressed no penitence for sin. You see, we could have two different tendencies. As it was done by the first mother, Eve, it was a very shallow one, just kind of scratch of the sin. But as we've been repeated by human beings, Adam and Eve, over and over again, you know, through almost 1,000 years of life, has been what? Engraved and inserted over and over again. And finally, it became a one strong character. And there was a mark of inclination toward a sin. So today we have to learn. You see here, no truth does Bible set forth in clearer light than the peril of even one departure from the right. Peril both to the wrongdoer and to all whom his influences shall reach. Example has wonderful power. And when cast on the side of the evil tendencies of our nature, it becomes well nigh irresistible. Here says, once we have this tendency, it would be very hard to reject. Irresistible. As I've told you, we had an inclination to sin. From the very beginning of our forefathers, Adam and Eve, to the very last moment that we are going to be dressed with, the, you know, the, the garment of righteousness. We still have this inclination to sin. As uh, Mr. You know, Azin Poor Saitra mentioned, if the life is the you know, successive choices between our birth and the death, what kind of choice we could make? Here, the Revelation 22 verse 11 said, Let him who does wrong continue to do wrong. Let him who is vile continue to be vile. Let him who does right continue to do right. And let him who is holy continue to be holy. We are very much acquainted with this message, right? But let me tell you, it is talking about our tendency or our inclination. If we are trying to be holy, understand, and practice at the good ways, then we'll continue to be that way, just like Abel. But if our hearts and our tendency, inclination, is already crooked by sin and always forwarding toward that sin, then would be what vile, or we would do wrong things. So today, as we have this message, show no evil, see no evil, and hear no evil, speak no evil. I'm not talking about a negative comment, but I want to give you a better ones, which is the, from the, you know, the, the Romans chapter 12, giving us a positive comment. Instead of, do, no, do, do not do this, do not do this, we may say, do this and do this. So let me change this. All right? Shall we read all together? Ready, go. Show the good. See the good. Hear the good. Speak the good. Yes, 옳은 것을 말하고, 의로운 것을 듣고, 성결하고 정결한 것을 말하라. How we can be. You know, the Romans chapter 12, verse 21 says, Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. So today I want to emphasize our church members. Remember this. Show the good. See the good. Hear the good. And speak the good. How can we do this? I don't know whether you remember this. 329.1. Do you have any clue of this? Actually, last March 5, I preached about this. But I believe it's about three, four months ago. I believe many of you already forgotten this. But anyway, 300. Let me tell you. 
if there are three minor mistakes, there would be 29 major dangers or major disasters. And finally leads into one fatal mistake, death. This is, you know, William Heinrich's, you know, triangle theory. If there are, you know, actually he was, you know, the, the insurance company person and manager. And he was always trying to figure out why so many things are happening this way. So as he studied over and over again for many, many years, he concluded, okay, if there are generally 300 mistakes, small minor mistakes, if they just disregard that, they would have a 29 major defects. And once they just continue with these 29 major defects, then there will be one final fatal death or big disaster to the company or to the person. Well, I would say the spiritual life is still the same. You know, we have lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and pride of life. That even Jesus had tempted by Satan in the wilderness. No other people, you know, regardless, uh, the, the, you are pastors, you are, you are, you are you know, old end ministers. But let me tell you, we are all in this category. Human beings are not be able to avoid from this. All this, once we are doing this, a 300 temptations are, you know, coming to our lives. But if we are continuing to accept it and enjoy those small temptations, it will bring us into a big tank of sins. And finally, we will have the eternal death. I already gave you, I kind of, you know, the domino effect. The very small things. If you are sincere with small things, you will be sincere in large things. That is the lesson from the Bible. You know, we have this video. You see, once small things hit, after 9, 10, you know, hundred millions of times bigger, heavier things would collapse. Then now we, we converse this one. The, the backwards. Then we may have a spiritual lesson. Just like don't do, 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 do this. You know, four no's. No. Now we are trying to have four yes. You do this, you do this, you do this, you do this. It encourages us to give, uh, to have a power to overcome all the temptations. In other words, if we are facing 300 small temptations from Satan, if we are always trying to be with the word of God and prayer, if we are rejecting or, you know, defeating this a 300 minor temptations, we can overcome 29 big troubles. And even the last one fatal mistake we could prevent. So this is the message. We are all in the world with the lust of flesh and lust of the eyes and the pride of life. But once we are standing with the word of God, and if we always pray to the Lord and spiritual God, our angels and Jesus Christ, our great warrior is standing beside of us. Yes, we will do the good things. And finally, we'll have the eternal life. So my dear brothers, then how we can have this? You know, now you look at this. The back words. Now we, are, we, we focus on small things, but that big one is now rejected. I mean, erected. And all the uh, negative progress being somehow healed. Recovered. How? Then what is that big power comes from? Let me tell you. We need to pray for this big power, which is the power of the Holy Spirit. Let me read. This is so small, so I need to <laughs> read from this side. Please forgive me. Before offering himself as the sacrificial victim, he, Jesus, instructed his disciples regarding a most essential and complete gift which he was to bestow upon his followers. The gift that would bring within their reach the boundless resources of his grace. I will pray the Father, he said, 
and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it saith him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. John 14, 16, and 17. The Savior was pointing forward to the time when the Holy Spirit should come to do a mighty work as his representatives. The evil that had been accumulating for centuries was to be resisted by the divine power of the Holy Spirit. The very ending message here, you know, the evil that has been accumulated for centuries, even for millenniums, once we are overpowered by the Spirit of God, it will be resisted. We will have the power to overcome. Let me read it one more time here. Those who at Pentecost were in, uh, endued with the power from on high were not thereby freed from further temptation and trial. Here said, although you and I are filled with the Spirit of God, it doesn't mean that we are free from the trials and temptations. As they witnessed for truth and righteousness, they were repeatedly assailed by the enemy of all truth who sought to rob them of their Christian experiences. They were compelled to strive with all their God-given powers to reach the measure of the stature of man and woman in Christ Jesus. Daily they prayed for fresh supplies of grace that they might reach higher and still higher toward perfection. Under the Holy Spirit's working, even the weakest, by exercising faith in God, learned to improve their entrusted their powers and to become sanctified, refined, and in, ennobled. As in humility, they submitted to the molding influences of the Holy Spirit, they received of the fullness of the Godhead, Godhead and were fashioned in the likeness of the divine. So today, my brothers and sisters of SUIC, yes, truly, inclination governs our choice. But we have to make decision today. Our tendency, maybe our inclination, would be toward sin because we are weak. But as I already have given you the answer, if we read the Bible every day, and if we pray to the Lord, as Mr. Hong said this morning to the children, if we speak to God through our prayer, you know, our God is empowering us with His power, with His Spirit, and our inclination toward the sin would be corrected and we would no longer choose the wrong things, but we would do good things. Show the good, say the good, hear the good, and speak the good. May the Holy Spirit, as we desire for, continually come upon our hearts. And finally, we'll always choose the best good things. So eternal life will be yours and mine forever. This is my prayer. Amen. We want to thank our pastor for that very powerful message this morning. And now we have come to the next section of our worship hour this morning is uh, to return our tithes and our offerings uh, to God. And so I'm going to ask our deaconesses to collect the offerings now.
Let's pray God's blessing over the tithes and the offerings. Let's bow our heads together. Loving Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you for the blessings which you have so freely bestowed upon us. And this morning, Father, we have returned the tithes and the offerings that you have blessed us with. Lord, your word says these belong to you. You only require one-tenth of our earnings, Father. The nine-tenths we can keep for ourselves, Father, but yet you require only one-tenth. And this morning, Lord, we have brought what you required of us into your house of worship here this morning. And Father, I pray that this money will be used to bring many, many souls to Christ. And Father, we pray that as this money will go all around the world, Father, that you would bless it and multiply it, Father, and so that many um, other people can hear about your love for them and about your very soon coming. And so, Lord, we commit these tithes and offerings unto you, and we thank you for this wonderful blessing that we could return our tithes and offerings to you. And we pray this in the loving and wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. Let us now stand and sing our closing hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. As our gracious Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for your friendship and your brotherhood and your wonderful love. Oh, Father in heaven, today we learn the lesson from the Word of God that our inclination towards sin is inherited somehow from the beginning of this, uh, this word. But so, Lord, 
We pray that your mighty and strong power of the Holy Spirit will come upon us and will change us, will renew our spirit so that instead of being crooked and, and deprived that wrong way, we may be corrected and renewed and refreshed by the Spirit of God and we will choose the good things and the righteous things in our lives. Oh Lord, we do know, yes, it is like, like a successive choices between our birth and death. But Lord, because you have chosen us and we have chosen you as our Savior, Lord, let us keep this wonderful relationship in you so that we may choose the eternal life through our daily practice of good choices. Make our lives according to your will, just like Abel, so that we may be accepted to the sight of God. This is our humble prayer today in Jesus' name. Amen.